As we have seen before, there are certain products that have very predictable answers. So, for example, one of the products that we can predict the answer to is something like x minus 2 and x plus 2. If we recognize that this is what we call one of our special products, it makes it very easy for us to multiply this out because we know that a sum and difference bracket gives you the difference of two squares as its product. And the opposite is also true. If I've got the difference of two squares and I'm looking for the factors, I know that the factors will be a sum and difference product. So we're going to have a look at another product that also gives you a predictable answer. So for example, something like x plus y, x squared minus xy plus y squared. Okay, if we have a look at this product and we do our distributive law and we multiply the x by all the terms and we multiply the y by all the terms. x times x squared is x cubed, x times negative xy is negative x squared y, x times positive y squared is positive xy squared, y times x squared y is positive x squared y, y times negative xy is negative xy squared, and y times positive y squared is positive y cubed. And if we just do a little bit of tidying up here, there's no like terms for the x cubed. Negative x squared y plus x squared y is 0, plus x squared y minus x squared y is 0, and we're just left with x cubed plus y cubed. And we can call this the sum of two cubes. x cubed is a perfect cube, y cubed is a perfect cube, and we are adding them. Okay, so that gives us a predictable answer. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, so if we do the same thing here, a times a squared is a cubed, a times 3a is plus 3a squared, a times positive 9 is positive 9a, minus 3a squared, minus 9a, and minus 27. If we now tidy up here, there are no like terms for the a cubed. 3a squared minus 3a squared is 0, 9a minus 9a is 0, and we're left with a cubed minus 27. And we might call this the difference of two cubes. Okay, so let's take a look at the formation of that product that gives us either the difference of cubes as our answer or the sum of cubes as our answer. So if we just look at x plus y, x squared minus xy plus y squared, and if we look at a minus 3 and a squared plus 3a plus 9. Okay, and if we look at what the answer was, the answer here was x cubed plus y cubed, and the answer here was a cubed minus 27. Okay. The first thing that strikes me is that this sign here, let me just do that in a different color, this sign here, the plus, and that there, and there, and there, are the same. Okay, so that sign is the same as what it is in the product in both cases. Okay, so I'm going to use a little s. The, if we now go to the other bracket, this sign here is the opposite of what it is over there. So that one's positive, that one's negative, that one's negative, that one's positive. So it's the opposite. And the very last term in each case, the plus here, that will always be positive. Okay, it will always be positive no matter what because you, you've, you're squaring it to get to that point. So it's always going to be a positive uh, sign at the end and it's always going to be positive. So you can see that the signs spell out the word soap. Same, same in the first bracket as what's in the product, opposite from what's in the first bracket, and always positive. Okay, so that's the starting point. Now if we look at the actual values, this x here is the cube root of x cubed, and this y here is the cube root of y cubed. So the cube root of x cubed is x, the cube root of y cubed is y. If we look here, this a is the cube root of a cubed. Negative 3 is the cube root of 27. Okay, so the first, the terms in the first bracket are the cube roots 
of the terms in your product. Okay? This one here, the x squared, is that first term times by itself. So it's x times x. The middle term is x times y. So it's the two numbers inside the bracket times together. And the last term is y times y. Let's have a look here. a squared is a times a. 3a is 3 times a. So it's following the same pattern. And 9 is 3 times 3. Okay. So if we want to factorize, if we want to do the opposite, or, or, or opposite of what we do when we multiply out. So for example, if we ask to factorize fully, 64 minus m cubed. 64 is a perfect cube, it's equal to 4 cubed. m cubed is a perfect cube, it's m times m times m. So, if we want to factorize it, we know that the difference of two cubes comes from a binomial times by a trinomial. We know that the signs are same, opposite, and always positive. It spells SOAP, same, opposite, always positive, so it'll be negative the opposite sign, and always positive. The terms inside the first bracket are the cube root of the first term. Cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of m cubed is m. The first term in this bracket is the first term of the binomial multiplied by itself. The middle term is the product of the two terms in the binomial, and the last term is the last term in the binomial squared and you have factorized the difference of those two cubes. When we look at number two, it looks more complicated, but it's not really because every element here, every numerator and denominator is also a perfect cube. 125y cubed is a perfect cube, 27 is a perfect cube, z cubed is a perfect cube, and 8 is a perfect cube. So we, can, we know it's going to do a binomial times a trinomial. It's also um, a minus there, so same, opposite, always positive. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. And the cube root of 125y cubed is 5y. Cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of z cubed is z. Cube root of 8 is 2. The first term in the trinomial is the first term of the binomial times itself. So 5y times 5y is 25y squared. 3 times 3 is 9. The middle term is the product of the two term, terms, so it will be 5yz over 6. Remember when you times fractions, you just multiply the numerators and the denominators together. So you just times the two numerators and the two denominators, and then the last term will be z squared over 4, and you have factorized the sum and difference of cubes. Okay, <clears throat> there's some examples for you to try, so please pause the video here. Right, number one, our binomial and our trinomial, it'll be the same, the opposite, and it'll always be positive. Cube root of x cubed is 8, cube root of 8 is 2. First term squared, product of the two terms, last term squared. Okay, so it'll be x squared minus 2x plus 4. Number two, 216 minus y to the power of 12. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. Cube root of 216 is 6. The cube root of y to the 12, you've got to think a little bit about. Because remember, a cube root is the number that I times by itself three times to give me that product. So I want to know y times y times y. What must the power be that I get y to the 12? And remember that I add the exponents to get to that 12. So the three numbers that I add together that are the same to give me 12 off is 4. So it will be y to the power of 4. <coughs> Another way of looking at it is just to say 12 divided by 3. Okay, the 36, 6y to the 4, and y to the 4 squared is y to the power of 8. Okay, and then the last one, it'll have the same sign, opposite sign, always positive. Cube root of a cubed over b cubed is a over b. Cube root of 8 over 27 is 2 over 3. That will be a squared over b squared. 2a over 3b. And 4 over 9.